right, I'm here with Rick Barada from Royer Labs. Royer Labs, of course, uh, well known here at uh, AES 2006, uh, uh, manufacturers of fine ribbon microphones. And uh, we've been talking about uh, what makes a ribbon microphone different from uh, uh, garden variety uh, microphones of other designs. Uh, ribbons, of course, uh, are very delicate. Uh, they involve a high degree of engineering. And uh, Rick was just telling me uh, a couple of uh, things about the what you actually find inside a Royer uh, ribbon mic, and to some degree, what uh, what uh, you will find in uh, in ribbon mics of all types. Rick, uh, tell us a little bit about. Uh, this, this assembly right here, this is a transducer assembly from your SF series of mics, is that right? Correct. This is a highly accurate assembly. It uses a very light mass ribbon uh, on the order. It's about a sixteenth of an inch wide, 1.8 microns in thickness. It's very delicate, but it also responds very instantaneously. It's an excellent transient response. 1.8 microns, how many How many inches is this? Uh, it's about 37 millionths uh, of an inch. Wow. Pretty, pretty, pretty thin. Um, also, the corrugations on the ribbon are required because the ribbon has to have an elasticity. Uh, a flat ribbon really wouldn't sound very good. So we have a, uh, a method called the direct corrugating method where the ribbon actually goes through a pair of very precisely meshed gears at a particular temperature and at a particular uh, lash, which is the how close the gears are to each other. Normal ribbon microphones of yesteryear actually put a piece of flat aluminum between two pieces of uh, what's called glassine paper, and they ran those through very tight gears. It made uh, a very straight ribbon with corrugations, but the corrugations were shallow. So by direct corrugate, corrugating method, you have a very elastic ribbon, which can take a lot more punishment than earlier uh, ribbons, say, like on an old RCA. And you can actually see the corrugations here. You sure can. Uh, that's the, uh, the the sort of the, the sort of ripple uh, ripple or ridged or uh, ridged right. characteristic. And actually, if you blow into the ribbon gently, you can see it'll it'll move out like the sail on a boat. Oh. And when you let the it's the, actually thinner than paper. Of course, it would. It's a lot, It's thinner than a human hair. No. The R series microphones, which were designed for more rugged applications, use a 2.5 micron ribbon. It's also um, about two inches versus one inch for the SF series and a quarter of an inch uh, in width. Um, but it also uses the direct corrugating method, but it can take a lot higher SPL um, and a lot more abuse. Speaking of uh, the different applications of uh, some of your mics, why don't you uh, back up a little bit and uh, talk to us about the uh, different applications in the various uh, 120 uh, series. Or is it, it, you were mentioned that this that, uh, the 121 would be more for. Well, go ahead. Well, the R121 is a passive ribbon, and it works best um, with loud uh, sound sources, and uh, it's also very durable. And because it's a passive ribbon microphone, it does really need to be mated with a high gain low noise preamplifier. So we were addressing issues where people said, well, I've got your microphone, but I can't really afford a really high gain $3,000 preamp. So we developed an R122, which has the gain, a lot more gain produced at the microphone so that you could use almost virtually any preamplifier and still get the performance. Still, with the large geometry ribbon, it's ideally suited for spot miking, horns, loud guitars, um, vocals, etc. Um, then we were addressing some issues that we experienced rarely, but still experienced, where the 48 volt phantom that the uh, active ribbon operates from would sometimes have headroom limitations on extremely loud uh, signal sources. So we developed the R122V, which is a vacuum tube microphone, which has virtually unlimited headroom. Interesting. And the vacuum tube's on board? The vacuum tube is, is on board. Um, you can see the two vents that allow for convection um, to keep the tube cool. And uh, it uses a miniature tube, new old stock, uh, a 5840 sub-miniature tube, and it's wired as a cathode follower, so it's got excellent headroom. Um, also, in the, uh, the power supply, which is right down there, uh, we use a Jensen output transformer, 
uh, so you get a very high quality, electrically balanced, I mean, uh, electrically isolated balanced signal output. Terrific. Well, Rick, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The uh, Royer uh, ribbon microphones on GearWire.